Hello everyone, I'm going to discuss about the behaviors and perspective on teaching and learning. Here is our activity. My question is, when a teacher asks you why you failed in the exam in front of the class, what will you feel? Will you feel like you feel ashamed, mad or angry, or you just ignore him or not? I know most of you answered mad or angry, right? Okay, thank you for participating. To formally start our discussion, so again, our topic for today is behaviorism perspective on teaching and learning. So what is behaviorism? Um, it is a theory that human or animal psychology can be objectively studied through observable actions, behaviors, rather than thoughts and feelings that cannot be observed. So behaviorism can also be thought of as a form of classroom management. Behaviorists believe human beings are shaped entirely by their external environment. So what are those external environments? It's either social, political, economical, or environmental. Um, there are two types of behaviorism. So what is it? First is the methodological behaviorism, which was influenced by John B. Watson's, and radical behaviorism was pioneered by B. F. Skinner. For methodological behaviorism, John Watson was labeled as the founder of behaviorism. So he published a paper that rejected the mentalist methods and detailed his philosophy on what psychology should be the science of behavior. For radical behaviorism, um, the finer of it is B.F. Skinner. His ideas was focused on the scientific explanation rather than methods. So his approach to behaviorism was to understand the relationship between an animal's behavior and its environment. In behaviorist approach, um, behaviorists believe humans learn behaviors through conditioning, which it associates um, stimulus in the environment, like sounds or how they respond to the sounds they hear. So I will discuss about the difference between the two types of conditioning. So these are classical and operant conditioning. So in classical conditioning, um, an animal or human learns to associate two stimuli with each other. So this type of conditioning involves involuntary responses such as biological responses or emotional ones. So one of it is the example or the experiment from J.B. Watson's and Rosalie Rainey. It's called Little Albert. So in this experiment, they expose a nine-month-old child whom they called Little Albert. They expose Albert in a white love rat and other furry animals like rabbit, dogs, as well as cotton, wool, and other stimuli that will, which did not frighten Albert. Later, however, Albert was um, allowed to play with a white lab rat. So in this experiment, Watson and Rainer, Rainey made a loud sound with the use of a hammer. So in that case, um, Albert was frightened and it made him cry. And after repeating uh, this several times, the sound, the loud sounds from the hammer, um, Albert made uh, feel distress. And when he was presented with only the white rat, um, it showed that he had learned to associate his response by becoming um, afraid and crying, which is, um, it produced another stimulus that had not frightened him before. Whereas in the operant conditioning, okay, um, it's uh, one example of it is from B.F. Skinner. 
So it is called, um, it was called Skinner boxes. So in this type of um, conditioning, um, a um, an, an animal or a human learns a behavior by associating it with consequences. Okay. So this can be done through positive or negative reinforcement or punishment. So B.F. Skinner, in his experiment, um, he placed a, um, con uh, a hungry rat in a box containing a lever. So as the rat moved around the box, it will occasionally press the lever, consequently discovering that food will drop when the lever was pressed. Okay, so after some time, the rat began running straight toward the lever. So in that case, when it was placed inside the box, um, it actually, the rat, the rat actually figured out that the lever meant it would get food. Okay, so in a similar experiment, um, a rat was placed inside the box with an electrified floor, causing the rat um, discomfort. So the rat found out that the pressing the lever stopped the electric current. So after some time, the rat figured out that the lever would mean that it will no longer be subject to an electric current. So the rat began running straight forward to the lever when it was placed inside the box. So, to another, in another experiment, so in that kind of experiment, um, it demonstrates that in an offering conditioning, the animal or human learns a behavior by associating it with consequences. As I mentioned in the offering conditioning, um, there are three types of reinforcement. So, it was uh it is um positive reinforcement negative reinforcement reinforcement and punishment so behaviorists believe that um if teachers provide uh, positive um reinforcement or rewards whenever students perform a desired behavior or they learn they learn to perform the behavior or they learn to perform well in the class. Um, um, for example, is um, in the last experiment of VF Skinner, when the rat learned that the lever will provide food. Okay, so um, when something is good is added, for example, a food pellet drops into the box. Um, to teach a new behavior, okay? So the rat uh, learned that when pressing the lever, it will, the pellet food will drop in the box. So whereas for the negative reinforcement, um, the same concept, okay? So when something bad is removed, um, for example, an electric current stops, it's it's um it's kind of a it's kind of an uh, perceived stimulus or um it's like um avoiding a negative outcome the same concept in the punishment whereas um behaviorists think people act in response to internally or externally generated physical stimuli so they basically they basically consider human nature to be the product of one's environment. So to conclude our discussion, um, behaviorists in teaching and learning, one of example, one good example is that um, behaviorism is um, when teachers reward their class or a certain student with a special treatment or um, for example, at the end of the week, um, they um they are in good behavior so the student or the teacher will reward rewarded them by for example giving um a simple gesture like um 
tapping their shoulders or like um, telling them that they are good, um, keep up the good work, um, it might be verbal or physical. Um, same also in the punishment. So same concept is used with the punishment. Um, the teacher can take away certain privileges like for example they misbehave um teachers can they can uh, punish them in a positive or a negative response and that concludes our discussion thank you everyone